So good afternoon and welcome to the presentation about architecture at the University of Limerick. My name is Gronia Hassett and I'm the head of school and I'm going to explain what you'll study and uh, how you'll study it. And together here with me is Miriam Dunn, who's the course director. And as you send in your questions, Miriam will be answering them and together we'll answer any more that you have at the end of the session. So, so what would you study um, if you came to look at architecture? Um, you would study construction, structure, law, socioeconomic principles, lots of things. As you can see in this list, it's things that stretch from quite philosophical things to quite pragmatic and practical things. Um, so it's a very broad course and it goes into detail. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit as we move through the slides. But let's just back up once. At Seoul, the course is five years. Uh, there are small classes and it's a lovely small community, a very supportive community, I would say, of 30 to 40 students per year. Sometimes it can be less. And the studies last five years. So they're the first stage on a pathway to an accredited professional degree, which is given uh, through exams so ultimately at the RIAI, which is the Royal Institute of the Architects of Ireland. So if anybody wants to become an architect in Ireland and they want to be a registered architect, they have to become part of the professional uh, framework of the RIAI. So our studies here, the five year studies, lead towards that. And they must, the studies must be five years, they must be full time, and that's the only way of becoming a registered architect in this country. It doesn't matter what the degree is called, it doesn't matter whether it's called a BARC or an MARC, you must do five years and you must do them full time. So that's what we offer here, an accredited recognised professional degree. And now I'll talk a little bit about how you study all these things and what you might experience if you came to Seoul. So the first thing to say is that we say we work on global problems in a local, in a local setting. So if you look here at this picture of the Shannon estuary, you'll see that we have lots of issues arising in this single landscape. We have lots of global interest, uh, interest uh, issues of global interest from, you know, wind power to coastal erosion, to farms and the social structure around farms, to the existence of a, uh, an airport, to the history of places like Glyn Castle or the history of a place like Shanna Golden. So there's that mixture of broad global issues, very local issues, historical issues, new questions around erosion, around the migration of animals, around the migration of land, around silting up of rivers, around what the new economic answers for living in the land might be. So if any of those kinds of questions are, are, are things you would like to work on and think about what the answers in design should be for them, this is the kind of course for you. And then because we like to say it's an internationally focused course with a local setting, let's look at who's teaching you. So here we've got a, about, what, 15 pictures or 11 pictures, me on the extreme right hand side, um, of the people who will be teaching you. There's about 25 of us, so this is, this is half of us. Uh, and as you can see here, some of us are based in Limerick, Dublin, Cordoba, Fez. Some are living in these places, some are flying in from these places, some are teaching from these places or once worked in these places. Now, what does that mean? That means that we're bringing in the best of, of cutting edge thinking or maybe just the best of cutting edge problems and we're all sharing them together globally with the best practice. So some of our teachers are, prof are professional registered architects, some are academics and historians, some are uh, running other kinds of practices like a utopian thinking practice or like a digital fab lab practice. So this is a very, very type of um, environment and, and uh, sense of expertise that comes to bear. And where you study then is in Seoul Studio. So the studio is really important to us. It's the heart of the place. And you're going to see a lot of pictures of Seoul Studio as I go through this. Here you can see that the second year students are all working together on maps for Dublin, overdrawing them with their hands. The maps have been drawn, printed out digitally. And you can see that there's models lying around, that there's full scale drawings. And of course, you might guess if you paid attention that someone took this picture from above. And that means that we learn everything from everybody. Every classroom looks in on every activity so that learning is constant and the sharing is constant and that kind of builds our sense of community. And we make and build things in full scale and this here is a picture of the founder of the school, Professor Merritt Buchholz, who's still with us and he's drawing on the wall on the, on the drawings explaining as we go and we make things and this is Naomi Panter, so who's graduated from the school 
And as you can see, she has her own desk, she has her computer, but she's also making things by hand. She has a scale rule and she has a scalpel and a cutting board. She's got space to store her drawings and she has her own locker. So we believe a lot in giving people that space and allowing them to develop their own work in making in that space. And we share things. So here you see two professors talking to uh, two students about the work which is on the floor. And we're often making things on the floor. We're making models together in group work and um, trying to put together a model here, which is made out of modeling clay. Uh, and other times the studio gets really messy. So here is me kneeling down in pink and again, more mixture of students and staff at a proportion of about four staff here to the remainder. Um, you can see all the wood and all the drawings and everything around. So it's a moment of intensity. So we are interested in materials and we build real projects in real uh, time. So here on our beautiful campus, which you may have seen, or if you haven't, look, look it up because it's stunningly beautiful. Um, a students here building a, a line essentially on landscape with the slimmest means possible. And you can see how beautiful this is. And then there are moments where we all come together, moments of great joy and sharing. So this is when a moment when a final year student is presenting their thesis and it's a fantastic thesis for uh, an idea about a place where farmers would come to democratic agreements between themselves about how the land should be used in West Cork. And the student made this giant model out of concrete and plaster and his drawings are up on the wall and he's presenting it here to a mixture of the teachers who taught him and the external examiners and all of his colleagues. And so again, this picture is taken from above. So other people are leaning over the balcony and, uh, and sharing the moment. And you can see that people are photographing it behind uh, and everybody's interested, basically. It's a moment of kind of pent up excitement. And another student presenting his thesis final project, this time just two people, much more intimate. And this student, Sean, is presenting his uh, idea for a a framework for traditional music performance in Spittle and the external examiner is using a ruler to point at the map that he has drawn and asking him about uh, the, the, the project that he's doing. So there's a, there's a challenge and there's an interrogation of what you're doing and there's, there's a defence but there's a respect. You're treated on an equal level. You're an architect from day one and we will share the, the voyage with you. So we're making stuff, we're making stuff all of the time and you've seen the mess and you've seen the, the precision as well. And we're learning about the qualities of things as we make them. This is Orla Punch who is making a, a relief on a surface and trying to measure relief at full scale. She went on to make an incredible thesis on Mars of all places and went on to briefly work with the European Space Agency and is back working as an architect now in a more regular fashion. And this is Stephanie Maloney who went to work in the States following making a really beautiful uh, thesis project which was around drainage and flooding patterns in Limerick city centre and harnessing water. So again I'm showing you these to show you the physical and full scale nature of the contact and the precision with which people are working as well. And then every now and again we clean up and we sweep up and we organize ourselves and we make exhibitions. So learning how to present things and make exhibitions and defend things in public is a really important part of, of our work. And the work has to be fed from somewhere. So this is a picture of us on a school trip and um, this time in Fez, uh, uh, sorry, this time in Marrakesh and we're working with the students of the School of Architecture in Marrakesh. Um, to share ideas about uh, building in the current climate. So it's very important that we bring in other perspectives. So let's think again about what you're learning. So you're moving between the very philosophical, as I said earlier, and the very practical, perhaps, as I said earlier. So you're learning very practical, straightforward things like you saw Naomi doing at the beginning, like you saw all the pictures of people I showed you. So you're making a model, you're cutting up card, you're learning how to sew a piece of timber. Meanwhile, you're learning about the history of architecture, the history of ideas, the history of economics, the history of art, the history of the land, the history of sociology and so on. All of the philosophical ideas that exist that underpin how we use space, how we use buildings, what we should be doing with towns and villages, land, cities. And then more practical things altogether, like what size is a block? What size is a turning circle for a fire engine? What is a staircase? How do you construct a staircase? And all of those things then come together around a project or around a seminar. 
And so some of them are gathered together in one project and it might last several weeks. And others might be gathered together in an intensive workshop in let's say three days. And others are kind of slow and ongoing. So it's kind of like this drawing here. So it's a rhythm, you know, sometimes it's intense, sometimes it's ongoing, sometimes it's long, and sometimes it's kind of square. So all the time you might be drawing, scaling, measuring, collaging, polishing, folding, like doing physical things with materials. But you're feeding in information that you've learned, technical information related to buildings and cities, like what pitch a roof it should be. Again, what dimension is a turning circle? How does fire compartmentation work? And then overarching over all, over all of these, you have ideas about land use, geography, sociology, history and mapping. So again, this is a re repetition for you of the same thing I said at the beginning. You're in a very broad, expansive field, which is fantastically compelling, I think. And then you're working very practically through that every single day. So how do we do that? So we do that, these are your subjects and we don't need to overly worry about them, but just to say that there's a big central subject in all of the years and it's called Design Studio. And that's where you design projects around the questions that are set. And then that's supported by five other smaller subjects and they are, they've got different names here, but they're actually really the areas of structure, the area of history, the area of drawing, the area of construction and the area of the environment. And that really repeats itself for first year, second year, third year. And we're interested and would strongly suggest that you would take a year out after third year to work in an architect's office and to build your real world experience and understand more how all these things you've learned play out in real life. And then you come back and fourth year and fifth year become much more about you leading it and you saying, I want to make a democratic space for farmers to agree things in West Cork and I'm going to design it and here's how I'm going to go about it. So we make things, we make things all of the time. Here's some extracts of many, many, really tens, almost tens of hundreds anyway, thousands of things that have been made in Seoul since we started 15 years ago. And we're learning from each other from those things all of the time in studio. And so this set of slides here I love because in this set of slides you see a number of people who are not in the same class and are not certainly the same age. So we have a wood um, technology expert with his back to us and we have the professor you saw earlier, Merit Pihul, and they're talking to each other about bending the wood here. And we have three students who are not in the same class. One of them is a first year and he's standing a little bit behind and he's trying to figure out what's going on and he's learning from that. And in this other view of the same slide from taken by someone up on the balcony, we have more students who gathered around the table and they're sharing it as well. And meanwhile, the fellow who built the machine, which is a steam bending machine for bending timber, which looks like a coffin there on the left, he's a graduate from our school and he's in the t-shirt and he's walking past. So it's a wonderful collection of first years, upper years, older people with knowledge, my wood technology gentleman here, the recent graduate, and the professor who appears to have just left the scene. And that sharing and that community and that we're all in this together, trying to learn new stuff is very much part of our ethos. So now to the digital and away from the physical for a minute. This is a picture of two people who are not actually in the School of Architecture, but they are working in our Fab Lab with our Fab Lab machinery. So the Fab Lab is a fantastic digital workshop that we set up and build the machinery for and operate from a public street uh, situation in Limerick City Centre. And it is a strong social mission and a strong cultural mission. So here again in the picture you'll see on the left hand side mostly our uh, young graduates or some of them were students at the time beside the machinery that they helped build in the early days before we had nice tables and they're talking to other makers and other members of the public in the evening time about courses and ideas. So we work there with uh, fashion students, we work with men's sheds, we work with local communities, we work with kids, we work with architecture students. It's a wonderful public facility that is operated with a high degree of social agenda. And on that point of social agendas, we also do a very interesting thing where we set up a, a research think tank every summer and we work on a real world problem and we employ and pay our students to do it. So this one here looked at the housing crisis in 2014 
and said, look, there's all these empty, beautiful Georgian houses in Limerick city centre. Why are we why are we doing this or what are we not doing with this? And we reported to government on how these could be brought into um, play for the, to help with the housing crisis. Another year we set a, made a major public exhibition working with uh, real uh, life problems, really thorny problems that we have in Limerick. Like again, this is one about George and Limerick. Another one is about the fact that lots of graduates can leave the region. Another one was about the fact that there is a phenomenal, beautiful food infrastructure in the region and people don't know that Limerick is famous for food. So we worked then with the girl in the, the white here is an economics student and then there's a marketing person in pink and the person with her back to us is um, a local businesswoman. We worked with a lot of the local traders and the local and government policy and econ economists and our own skills to try to come up with answers for difficult problems and made this fantastic exhibition. So again, here's part of our public exhibiting role here. Here we have one of our teachers and one of the local architects discussing, uh, as you can see, a very, very big and new and never drawn before map of Limerick city centre. So one of the things we do is we try to draw things that have never been drawn before. We try to discover things that have never been shown before. And that's where I'll finish and move on to the question uh, piece. So we say that it's about teaching us to develop new ideas at the edges of ideas that are needed for the world, that are needed for the planet, but with a very local focus and then moving through uh, a situation of making physical things every day. All right, so we are able to begin to think about uh, talking about the questions and answers. And I think Mary might be answering some of your questions already, but I'd be very happy to take some more now. Hi, Gronia. Thanks Hi. for that. Just to say there's no questions on the actual okay. chat, so maybe so we we can also say that we're, we can email either of us with any of your questions and we'd be very happy to, to deal with them uh, afterwards. Uh, our email addresses are something that I think were published in the last, uh, um, the last, there is a question coming in, I can see straight away. Uh, our question, uh, sorry, our email addresses were published in the last slide. What type of maths will be taught in architecture? Uh, no maths. That's the best type of maths in my view. Um, no maths, yeah. Um, a question came in about fees, I think, about in years four and five, there are no uh, special fees in years four and five, it is, uh, it is an undergraduate degree, it's a Bachelor of Architecture, so there are the normal registration fee, uh, that is for somebody res resident in the Repub Republic of Ireland. If you're an international student, obviously there are, um, I direct you to the university website for the fees for international students. Have you any courses, <coughs> excuse me, related to architecture other than civil engineering? I'm not so sure what that question means. So architecture is a is a bachelor degree. Um, it is its own thing. Uh, we that is the sole course that's offered in the School of Architecture is one course, which is the degree course in architecture. I hope that's helpful, Karen. Uh, I mentioned that I, uh, Miriam is always available to answer your questions. So she is miriam.dunn, D-U-N-N, at ul.ie. And mine, I am also, and I'm gronya.hasset at ul.ie, hasset, H-A-S-S-E-T-T. Happy to take any more questions. Another question coming in. Do the portfolios being cancelled? Will it be? Uh, the question disappeared, but I think it said, due to the portfolios being cancelled, will it be? on CAO points alone and the, the answer to that was yes, unless you're a mature student, um, because mature students obviously have their own process, which is an interview and those interviews have now been held. So what type of graduate prospects can you get after this five year programme? 
so that's a really good question, actually, because there's an awful lot of uh, an awful lot of answers to that. And you'll notice that I said to you that people were working on public buildings, that I said to you that people were traveling to the States, that people were traveling, worked in the European Space Agency. Uh, I could have said that someone actually worked in Formula E, you know, environmental car racing design, as well as everybody who was working in normal uh, architectural practice. So it's a very broad education that we think will serve you well to go into government policy areas, to go into lots of uh, attendant areas of design, as well as regular architectural work. Again, I hope that answers your question. I would say that it's cyclical uh, in the building industry and that obviously we all know that we had a recession 10 years ago. We uh, found that our students busied themselves with developing alternative industries in Fab Lab and working with us in the intelligence unit think tank. So everybody is always very busy. It's, it's a place that gives you a lot of skills to do a lot of different things. And that's the really good thing actually about architecture. Another question, some same as our ME programs. Uh, not sure what that question is about. I think I'm getting interference here. I'm wondering if there's been any questions to come in to you, Miriam. No, there's no questions. A question there. Well, Siobhan Harris has put up my um, uh, email address and I think you can put up Miriam's email address. Yeah. There is a question uh, there about will the points go up? Okay, I don't see that question. Uh, we, we can't really predict what points will do to be fair, folks. Um, it, that's in the lap of the gods. It's, it's uh, governed by um, demand, as you as you probably know. There's a question there about software other than CAD. That's yeah, what type of software do you use as an architecture student in this program besides CAD? Uh, a lot uh, is the answer to that. So, you know, um, BIM, Revit, uh, Maxwell, uh, Illustrator, InDesign, um, SketchUp, uh, quite a lot of stuff. It, to be honest, it'll also change by the time you're in the course and by the time you're in fourth year and fifth year, there'll be new stuff as well, you know. So um, we all, and I would say that we also prefer to use open source versions of things in, or, in order to leave all of those options available to you um, to find other options and other cheaper options. So certainly we teach, um, you know, across a wide range and expect you to be uh, uh, relatively proficient in across a wide range. But I would say also we really favour hand work as well because it's really important to train the hand and eye in order to be able to know what to ask the programme to do. Um, Photoshop is another one, obviously. So yeah, uh, Maxwell Render, I think I said that. Um, all of those. There are not intensive courses in studying digital uh, software in every school, in any school of architecture. Um, that really is something that needs a lot of time as well. School of architecture the things I mentioned. Okay, so I've full time course, yes. I'm hoping we've picked up all the
Okay. Anything else? We're here until we're here for another five minutes anyway. We'd be delighted to see you. We hope uh, that you do come. And I, I think what I would say about the course is that it's very compelling that people find it to be. You know, when we go to the first years or the second years and we say, well, are you happy? Do you like it? They go, oh, my God, I love the course. You know, it's, it tends to really, really capture people's hearts, I think, uh, a lot. Um, very much so. So if, you, if you're looking at the pictures and you're thinking, I'd like to be in there talking about ideas and making stuff and then out in the real world talking to so-called real people, business people, government policy advisors, uh, farmers, geographers about urgent ideas facing the planet. I'd like to be dealing with people who are located internationally and locally. Um, and I'd like to be making stuff and in a small community of people all sharing, all working hard on this stuff. Then this is the kind of course for you, you know. It's uh, it's uh, it's very compelling, I think. We're very proud of it. We're very proud of the place we've created. It's a little special place in the in the campus. Maybe we could add one of the first years will be prioritized in terms of being welcomed into the design studio. Yeah, so so yeah, I mean the, the first year experience is really important um, to us and to that end the university is doing a lot of planning at the moment that's COVID planning just like everywhere else uh, and we are prioritizing first year access to the campus in that COVID planning uh, to make sure that the first years get the best university experience and then from our point of view locally in Seoul and the School of Architecture we want you to have as much contact in the studio as you possibly can. Some of the work will be blended and online and um, that will change we hopefully in January back to the norm we would hope but um, but uh, we want the first years to have the biggest amount of access to the studio so that's how we're designing it right now. Is it a demanding course? Asks somebody. It's a really good question. Um, it is really demanding. Uh, it is very demanding. And I would say, funny enough, people don't seem to mind that anymore once they're in it and they have committed to it and they love it. They kind of go, yeah, it's demanding, but I absolutely love it, you know? And that's what people tend to say to you all the time. I'm very, very struck by that. I'm very struck by that. People kind of push brush aside the fact that it is demanding but it is it is demanding of you you can imagine if you're moving from big questions about the world to making something with plaster or a piece of wood and your plaster has just burst out of the mold you know um yeah that's all demanding of you but that's that's to the good to be honest i often think it's athletic you know in that way it, it, it demands a lot of the individual but it's completely compelling. I keep saying that. Very, very uh, enthralling. Engaging, isn't it? Engaging. We've about a minute to go in this session. We're very happy to go over, but I'm also happy to keep hearing your questions. Um, so maybe, and I'll just reiterate a few bits and pieces as I as I as I wait for the questions to come in. So I'm saying it's a five-year full-time accredited course. Uh, that means it is the first step to your pathway to becoming a registered architect. Um, it's an undergraduate degree, so if you're a resident of the Republic of Ireland, only registration fees um, uh, are are necessary. And then you study this mixture of things that move between, as I say, much more theoretical, much more philosophical to much more hard edged, normal, uh, practical things like how do I fold a piece of cardboard or how do I span across a room with timber? Um, we're working on international and global problems of climate change, of uh, heritage, conservation, of inclusion, of diversity, of housing, of nature, of land use of movement, of commuting, all of these kinds of contemporary problems so that are shared across the planet, but in a local environment. And then we're working by also doing field trips out to Dublin, out to other European centres, uh, one to North Africa. Um, and then 
during the summer and also during the, sem the semester time, we're working on live projects, either in Limerick City Centre, sometimes in Dublin City Centre, um, by and um, visiting by field work and um, with real live clients and real live um, pieces of things being built and tested. And then I mentioned our Fab Lab, so that's a big commitment we have to the social and creative life of Limerick uh, and Limerick City. Uh, and that's something we're very proud of and we want to develop. I mentioned that the classes are relatively small. They're, I see, the slides said 30 to 40. They actually can be as, as, as small as 20 to you know, 30. Um, and that, that that community is all in one studio. Some of you may have visited the studio already. Um, so it's a series of mezzanines that overlook one another with fifth year slightly separate on their own floor. But first to fourth year are all in the same space and everything happens in the same space. There are three new questions. Any new questions? I, I can only see one new question. They're in the published okay. tab. What's okay. the difference between this course and the other bachelor courses in, I think it says in Europe. Um, well, I guess the difference is that they're in Europe. And, uh, I think there's a different flavour in every architecture school. Um, I suppose, and I, I work as an external examiner in a number of different schools, and I'll be going to look at Queen's next week in Brighton, the week after, and I am a visiting professor in Sheffield, and I work occasionally in the University in Lille in Europe. So I would say they're all different, you know, they do have a different tradition and a different culture. I can only say that our, what ours is like as opposed to what all of the others are like. So what ours is like is a small family, small community of 150 people all working in an interconnected studio space, all making stuff with a sense of belief and urgency about the planet and about the future and about our contribution to that, I think. And a sense that we don't know all the answers and that we're trying to figure it all out together, but we're you know, actively engaged in making a change, very actively engaged in making a change. So. I know that our external examiners are very, uh, who hail from European countries and UK countries are very impressed by us, that they find it is a local and global school. So that's the thing I would say again. Um, next question is, what's the main difference between architecture and architectural technology? That's a good question. So architectural technologist, an architectural technologist will uh, work much more on details of buildings her or his whole life. Um, that is their mission inside of a, an architectural practice or a building practice or an engineering practice maybe, whereas the architecture is more about designing for these big scenarios I mentioned. And they could be, it could be a small scenario about the refurbishment of a Georgian house, or they could be a big scenario about the use of the whole Shannon estuary, or they could be about farming patterns or they could be about how the GAA use halls are now the public building in every village uh, and maybe more important than the, the, the church. What does that mean? How do we develop that as a piece of architecture? That's what architecture does. Working on details of how things are constructed all of the time is part of what architects do as well as all the other stuff and it's the totality of what architectural technologists do all the time. They work on details all of the time and they are very good at it. Yes, Miriam's answered that you can only become an architect if you study architecture. It's not the same as architectural technology. Yeah. And are there other requirements for the course other than meeting the required points? No. No, uh, there are not. Just meeting the required points. And being a nice person. Thirteen very good questions, actually.
So we might close it in a few minutes. If you would like to, we'll just leave it and go another few minutes. If you would have any more questions for us, we'd be very glad to, to take them. And again, by email later if you want. Um, Oops. Hey, Brian is trapped out there, so very good. Trapped out, yeah. Questions. Yeah, no, I can. Yeah, no, it, we don't officially arrange work placement for the year out, which happens usually after the third year. However, it is highly recommended that, that you would um, take a gap year between third and fourth year. And it, what we do as a community is endeavour to help anyone who's looking for work to put them in contact with offices that would, would take such placement, but it's not officially through you all. It, the School of Architecture, it is in other courses, but not the School of Architecture. Hi, Gwanda. You're, you're, you're muted there. Um, just to mention about work placement, uh, there where we do we do try to because a number of us are practicing architects and a number of us also run research think tanks during the summer so there's one a fantastic one starting up next wednesday with ennis town council and hopefully involving you know storytellers and historians and other engineers as well on mobility planning for the town center so these the, these these think tanks are always new every year we never know what each one is going to bring and this one we're employing five of our students on it and another person professor buchholz is going to also employ five of our students in dublin and i know a number of the staff have also already employed another four or five so there's there's we have a lot of work contacts and a lot of networks so there's not a formal co-op program system but there's a lot of informal or informal work contacts and networks that are always operating hopefully that's useful to you can you do a plc course to get into architecture um I think it's not a bad idea actually some of the plc courses are excellent at preparing people and they do look really good portfolios and really good um really good design work so yeah so it's a really good idea if you're thinking about it and also might give you a sense of the flavor of the place um, and whether it's for you i would encourage you to come and visit us in studio actually immediately for COVID. um you know it's not going to be absolutely ideal but if you decided not to make a decision right now or to defer or to PLC course, come back and visit us in spring. You'll always be really welcome in Seoul Studio. We would just say, come on in, have a look at stuff, talk to us, walk around the studio, you know, um, and you'll have a, a sense of what it's like. There's a question there, everyone knew about the course being online for the semester. We talked about it earlier, just in terms of blended learning. So the so the plan is um, 
it won't be, uh, we will be planning to have um, as much access as we can to the studio to do the work in the studio. And then how we will be doing it is first years will be in and then they'll be out and then second years will be in and then they'll be out and then first years will be back in and then be out, that kind of a way. And so when you're in studio, we'll be making things in studio, working in studio, and then we might be out and we might be on field work or you might be at home and doing a blended study online, let's say for history and theory lectures. Um, how we worked COVID at the, when lockdown first started is we worked very intensively online and um, with students, you know, where you're drawing on a screen or maybe even drawing on a piece of paper with a camera above you and communicating on one-on-one -on -one tutorials with the with our students. We think it worked very well. It took a lot of hard, hard work, but it's a very studious, very good um, way of, you know, really helping students through things actually very personally. But the summary really is that we're endeavouring to have as much studio as we can, basically. That is the summary of that. Um, yeah. So if I decide I don't like it after a year, is there an alternative course similar that I can jump over to? Um, jumping, uh, it's, uh, I I'll say, you know what, I will say that it's not, it, so it's more usual that someone decides they want to transfer after about five weeks rather than a year. But if it was the case that you decided after a year um, that you didn't like it, in other words, people tend to really start to love it and stay. You know, they're not really sure why they love it, but they, they love it and it grows and grows. If after a year um, they're really sure that they don't want to be there anymore, then they have another of, a number of options to transfer to any other course in the university as long as you meet their requirements. Okay, so if there's a special requirement for maths, or a special requirement for a physical of some sort uh, or whatever, then you will have to meet that requirement um, of the specific course. Um, is there a similar course to architecture? Well, architecture is architecture is architecture. You know, it's not, um, there, the, the, I suppose there will be other design courses, there will be other environmental courses, there will be other art courses, there will be engineering courses, but they're all their own thing, you know. Um, Maybe they are cousins, but they are their cousins, I suppose, rather than sisters. If you'd like me to clarify that more by writing back to me and a question, I'm very happy to deal with that again. Anyway, you can definitely leave the course. That's all cert certainly allowed. But hopefully you won't want to. Yeah, and in, internal transfers in UL are, are guided by admissions office and academic rules. So there's certainly people in the university who deal with those issues directly as well. Yeah, it's absolutely possible. Some places would have a specific requirement, you know, like for maths, for instance. All right, so maybe we will draw this to a clue. There's one more question there, Gloria. Is the final thesis essential to finish the course? The answer would be yes. Yes. Uh, do you have any recommendations for good college that offers a good PLC into architecture? Uh, I don't recommend any particular uh, P PLC course in, uh, uh, in particular. I know there's a number of excellent ones, both in Dublin and in Limerick. Um, if you wanted to to write to us to tell us where you are and we could maybe give you a uh, better better advice about that on the question about a final thesis yes uh, a thesis just to be clear is a drawn project and a written project and um, so it's mostly drawn and um, so it's it's a collection of of, of b models and drawings that you develop over an entire year about one single idea that you might bring forward so we had ideas for instance about dealing with flooding on, on an island in Limerick city centre by developing um, market gardening and farming buildings uh, were developed by one of our students this year. 
and another student developed a, um, a facility to help with mental health in the community and theatre. So it's a single idea that the student themselves brings forward and then does all the drawings for, and it takes a year for them to do that. That's the way thesis is finished in all, in all architecture schools. It's, um, I love the way every time we say we're going to close this up, there's a flood of questions. So um, I'm very happy to stay here a few more minutes if anybody has any more questions. OK, so we might hand it back to the moderator and just to conclude to say that you can contact either Miriam uh, Dunn, uh, so at miriam.dunn at ul.ie, that's D-U-N-N, -N, or myself, gronia.hasset at ul.ie, so H-A-S-S-E-T-T, -T, gronia.hasset. So thank you very much for attending and we will um, hand it over at that. Thank you very much. Hope to see you in September. <laughs>